Hey everyone, Brad here with Rev Robotics, and I'm joined today by Christine from our customer success team to help walk us through our 2024-2025 Rev Duo FTC Starter Bot Teleop Code. The entire code in Blocks and OnBot Java is published in our documentation space at docs.revrobotics.com. Getting code running can be one of the most important tasks and is often what our support team receives the most questions about. Before getting started, make sure your Control Hub, Driver Hub, Expansion Hub, and everything else is fully up to date using the Rev Hardware Client. Also, make sure that your batteries are fully charged so that you are set up for success this season before you get going. Everything starts with setting up your configuration so your Control Hub knows what is plugged into what port and so that your code references the correct variables. You can download and load our configuration if you want a starting point before diving into our code. Find our full configuration listed out at the start of our documentation, including a wiring diagram, a full gamepad layout showing what we have assigned to our buttons and joysticks. You will also find the downloads for the blocks code as well as uh, the OnBot Java. I'm going to let Christine take over and run us through our documentation uh, to help explain some of the more important features and unique aspects of our code this year. So let's take a look at programming Teleop on our starter bot this year. We do have our documentation broken down a little differently, where we have it broken into some different chunks to make it a little bit easier to navigate back to if there's something specific you're interested in learning more on, or if you just want to take a quick look at something as a reference for maybe a future robot project, or just to try out some different things. Our first page here is breaking down our configuration, our wiring di diagram, and our gamepad setup. If I look at my gamepad setup, there is a lot of buttons in use on our gamepad this year. So we have released a version in our upgrades on using two gamepads instead of just one, if that is what your drive team prefers. But let's take a look now at some of our initialization. So this is our part of our code that's going to run just one time when I first hit initialization on the driver hub. But once I've hit play, it will move on to our main loop. So up here I have our basic motor settings for our drivetrain in particular. So I have one running in reverse since the ultraplanetaries are currently mirrored and they are both currently running without encoders. I also have my variables established here such as my ones to determine just some true or false, my ones that I'll be using as part of my state machine, and then my most important variable is my one here called current state. Current state is going to be the one that the robot uses to know where the arm and wrist should currently be in, when using our preset positions. If I look a little bit down below, I have a breakdown of a little bit of the difference between OnBot Java and blocks for this section of code. In OnBot, we are using something called enum to be able to define these variables, but that's not available to us in blocks. So instead, we're, using our, we're creating strings using our text block to do a similar thing. With my current state variable, I am able to move between all of these different prepositions I have defined here in one of my functions, so that if I need to easily change one of these positions, I can do so here without having to change it everywhere it might appear in my code. So let's take a look at functions. Functions are new this year in our starter bot code, as this is the first time we are seeing about using them. And they're going to be super handy as we can break out our code into some different chunks so that if either to organize or to be able to easily find spots we want to either add or change or remove something from our code as we work. We have a breakdown here of what all of our functions do, along with kind of a brief difference of what they look like in blocks versus what they might look without them. At the bottom, we have a tutorial for if your team is interested in learning more about functions and a simple demo code to try out some different things using them. Let's look at programming and control, uh, controlling our arm and wrist. So we have both preset motions ready and we have manual control available on our robot. So if we need to adjust something as we are moving around the field, we're able to do so. Within our main loop, we are having our arm and wrist motors set themselves to run to position mode and their power is set to full. I have a lot of different preset motions available covering some different aspects of the game. We can see, for example, if I press the A button that my robot's going to move into its intake position with the arm down and the wrist out ready to pick up game pieces. 
Two of these are B and Sokol and our Y and triangle buttons are set to be toggleable. This means if I press them once, it will move to one position. Uh, and in this case, if I press it again, it will move to a separate position. This is super nice because I don't have to hold down that button to maintain a position, but I also don't have to worry if I continue to hold down the button that the robot's going to accidentally move between my different presets. So we are, have this set up using a variable for B in circle. We have it called last grab, and it's pretty much just checking, is the B button been released since the last time I pressed it? Y is doing a similar thing for hooking our specimens. And then I have a couple other buttons down here. I have X set up so that I can have the arm move to be ready to score in the lower basket. And then my left bumper is going to move the robot fully back to its initialization position like we see here. So that if I need to just get the arm out of the way for driving, or I just need to be able to reset for different reasons, that's available to do so. Manual control, since the arm is set to be moving between positions, we have it set so that it can just shift between a couple different intervals so that I can have the arm go up, down, and the wrist go in and out as I need. This val these values can be adjusted if I want either the arm and wrist to move quicker or if I just want more refined control. I can easily adjust these values so that I can get it how I feel like it will work best when driving. Our two servers this year are controlling our intake and our claw. For intake, our server is set to continuous mode so that it can continually bring in or release game pieces. So I need to make sure I do that on the SRS programmer before I get started coding. Our claw toggle is operating similar to the buttons we talked about previously, but it has a little bit of an added feature. We're using a variable to pretty much just tell is the claw currently open or closed, and then if it moves to the opposite when the button is pressed, and I also have a check again of if the right bumper is currently held down. This will be nice so that I don't have to continue to hold down that right bumper while also trying to drive if I'm holding on to a specimen. For driving, we are using a split stick arcade. So I am using both joysticks on my gamepad to control moving forward and back and also turning. This is using our standard equation to pretty much determine what stick is doing what and equal that out to a value that should between, be between negative one and one, which this clip box then makes sure, makes sure that that is within that range uh, because there is occasionally instances where it can go above or below that value. On my telemetry, I have a bunch of data coming back to the driver hub so that I can kind of see what the robot thinks it's doing. This includes having it tell me what state the arm and wrist are currently in, if the claw is open or closed, along with some values for the position of the arm and wrist so that I can look at that for reference if I need to make adjustments to my preset or maybe set up a new preset position. Now we aren't going too much into Onbot Java in this video, but we do have an overview available on our documentation page highlighting some of the cool features included along with a full version of the code, both for copying and pasting or just quick reference, and a downloadable version that you can take a look at. There are some differences between the blocks and Onbot Java code, so you can have fun taking a look and exploring what kind of, how the two different programs might function. Thank you so much, Christine, for helping us grasp the blocks code and, and giving us a walkthrough. Um, if you want to dive in deep into the code, uh, feel free to explore documentation further at docs.revrobotics.com. Check out our website, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on this video or reach out to our wonderful <laughs> customer success team at support at revrobotics.com. Good luck and have a fantastic season.